Have you ever wondered what is the difference between your home PC and a server machine? Both are computers, mostly based on x86 architecture, and both are running programs. Clearly, the most apparent difference is the form factor. Servers are manufactured in the standardized sizes so they can fit into server racks, and you can nicely stack loads of them in a single box. The major focus is on the reliability. Having dual power supply units and the ability to replace faulty parts without turning the machine off is very important. Compared to your office or gaming PC, servers usually contain more CPUs with NUMA support, they can act as one single powerful processor. From multiple standpoints, it is advisable to virtually split power over such computer into multiple virtual machines. You can run dozens of completely independent operating systems on a single server. And when one of them crashes for software reason or under hacker attack, virtualization features keep other systems securely isolated without any drop in their performance. Virtualization is a mechanism that allows to execute several instances of bare metal operating system on the same machine with minimal overhead. The metal operating system is called guest, and the environment it runs is called virtual machine with one or more virtual cores. The main component that controls the VM is called a hypervisor. In our case, the hypervisor is a Linux kernel with KVM module. Tacuum Prodigy processors support type 1 or native virtualization, but in this demonstration, we will focus on type 2, or in other words, hosted supervisor. So, at first, we use QEMU to run the host with 8 cores and 32 GB of RAM and two extra serial consoles redirected to the top terminals. Maybe you haven't noticed, but during the booting, one very important message for us was shown. This tells us that this machine supports KVM virtualization. There are many ways how to run virtual machines inside Linux. For this demonstration, we will stick to QEMU again. Simple call configures how much resources we want to offer for freshly created VM. The most important is the last switch for enabling KVM acceleration. Note that we are running exactly the same kernel image as for the host. Top left console shows the kernel is booting at almost the same speed as the host machine. Let's put the machine under pressure a little bit and let's run another virtualization with 4 GB of memory and two cores. Let's give them a little bit of time, and don't forget that we are running the Linux kernel built for Tacuum architecture inside QEMU emulation, and in this emulation we are running two virtual machines. Have you seen the movie Inception? This is something like that, but with two parallel storylines. One tells the story of Bray software engineer willing to check his favorite website through the console. Second story shows how difficult are the first steps with programming in C. The main difference between QEMU system, as you already saw in the previous videos, and QEMU KVM is that instruction set for VM is no longer emulated. It uses the same physical CPU and same instruction set as hypervisor. The difference is that the VM and the hypervisor run on different privilege level. The VM is fully under the control of hypervisor, which also grants VM and access to real hardware. At the same time, Secure and performance efficient execution of a VM demands an advanced features from hardware to allow to partition the resources. Virtualization's adverse support is required from interrupt controller and IPI block to reach appropriate VM along with vCPU at the correct time. The devices that cannot have pass-through assigned, such as UARTs, are further virtualized by software. One of the device virtualization mechanism is done by PageFold that is being delivered from guest VM to hypervisor, which is responsible to manage proper handling. And now we are finally there. The network requests within the virtual machine were propagated through the guest kernel to the hypervisor kernel. And through the QMU to the network adapter of the real machine, we are sitting right in front of it. Sounds complex, but everything is perfectly reliable and safe. Before shutting down the VMs, Let's check how the virtual CPUs were utilized during the experiment. That's all from us. For now, and thank you for watching.